External hard drives have been a popular way to add data storage for decades now. But this one tried to take things to a whole new level. I stumbled across what at first glance looks like a big external hard drive. It's from Micronet and called the SandCube, and a name like that suggests it's capable of more. Yet, on the back, instead of network jacks, it has four Firewire ports. That's not what one would expect, so I decided to take it apart, not just to give it a good cleaning, but also take a peek at what may be going on inside. Its late 90s appearance means its external plastics are mounted to an inner metal cube. The clear sides have four hex screws each and then easily come off. The graphite colored middle piece has its own screws on the front and back, then can be lifted away. I'll clean these up a bit later. This thing is pretty dusty, so I got the vacuum out before I went any further. SandCube was clearly not meant to be user serviceable, as evidenced by not one, but two warranty void stickers on the bottom. While these aren't great, they do at least give some indication as to whether any goofing around has gone on inside, and in this case, there hasn't. That ends now as I removed the Phillips screws securing the front and back panels, then went to remove the feet. Micronet was clearly serious about keeping people out as these use security Torx screws with a pin in the middle. But I have a set of those screwdriver bits, so they weren't a problem. Next, the outer shell came off to give a good look at the drives. There are six in here, specifically IBM Desk Stars with a capacity of 46 gigabytes each. They're all IDE, and I was curious how they connected, so I disassembled the sand cube further. Unplugging all the cables revealed the brains of the operation, which is less complex than I had anticipated. There are six IDE channels, with each getting its own ATA to Firewire controller, and a pair of Firewire hub chips to tie them all together. Okay, so where are the brains in this thing? Maybe on the back of the board? Nope, there's even less going on here. Just passive components and some small flash memory chips that support the controllers. So that means this thing isn't exactly a SAN or storage area network like one would expect. From a hardware perspective, it really is just a big external Firewire hard drive. What's the big deal? I pondered over that while I got it all put back together. The fan in the bottom did a good job of sucking in a lot of dust, which I cleaned out as I went. It's unfortunate this thing isn't more serviceable. With six hard drives, failures, especially IBM Desk Stars, or er, Desk Stars, is a win, not an if. So Micronet's paranoia of customers getting inside likely cost it more money than it saved, since this sucker is heavy and was probably expensive to ship for warranty repairs. I got the outside of the cube wiped down, then threw the outer plastics in the sink to give them a good scrubbing. They started looking much better, but removing the dust also revealed the unfortunate scratches and scrapes this sand cube accumulated over the years, a sad side effect from this era of industrial design. But after they dried, it was easy enough to get the panels put back on, and ultimately this thing looks far better than when I got it. But does it work? I plugged it in and flipped the switch, and it powered on. Being a Firewire device, it was primarily targeted at Mac users, so I pulled out a period-accurate computer. When I plugged in a Firewire cable, I expected a drive to appear on the desktop, but nothing. Maybe it had been wiped, so I opened Drive Setup, but it didn't show up there either. Did it at least appear in Apple System Profiler? Kind of. The iBook knew something was connected to the Firewire bus, but didn't quite know what it was. The owner's manual makes reference to a software installer you needed to run. That contains the system extensions necessary to get it recognized properly, but I spent days scouring the internet for a copy and came up empty-handed. It was never offered for download from the SandCube site, 
The closest thing I could find was an update. It said you needed to have the software already installed before it would run, but I gave it a shot anyway, and they weren't lying. It refused to do anything. That updater was made using Aladdin's Installer Maker, and I wondered if I could use it to extract the files as a workaround. But Installer Maker didn't even want to see it as a file it could open, even if I tried the old school trick of dropping it directly on the application icon. As a last ditch effort, I threw it at Stuff It Expander, which is also an Aladdin product, but it didn't do anything either. It's probably just as well I couldn't get the drivers I needed because there are two other pieces of software I wasn't able to find either. And they're what makes the Sand Cube interesting. The first one is called Express Raid, and it's what lets you manage the RAID arrays and volumes that the Sand Cube presents. You could configure pairs of drives as RAID 0 or 1 in any combination you wanted. But the real magic behind Sandcube was when you installed Excelware, which let you share it across multiple Macs. This is the reason why the unit has four Firewire ports on it, one cable for each computer. As long as Excelware was installed on all of them, it handled making the drives multi-access capable. That is to say, the computers could read and write data from the same volumes without stepping on each other or causing corruption. So this was a SAN in all but its name. It didn't use Ethernet simply because FireWire was much faster, at 400 megabits per second, at a time when 100 megabit fast Ethernet was the most common, and gigabit networking was bleeding edge and expensive. I can't say I'm surprised that ExpressRaid and Excelware are impossible to find. They were actually commercial software licensed from another company called Addo, which serves the high-end storage market. Addo is still around, and just so I could say I tried, I opened a support ticket and asked if they could provide the software. But of course, I just got a generic reply that they wouldn't help. And even if I could find a copy, it looks like it was software that required a serial number and product activation, the service for which has long since been discontinued. Sandcube debuted in January 2000 in several configurations. This one is apparently the highest end model, with six drives and licensing for four concurrent users, and it likely cost $4,000 US or so. It's hard to get an exact number because information on this thing is pretty scarce, with most searches turning up results about the Nissan Cube instead. There was also an announcement for a companion FireWire tape backup drive called the FireTape 50, but beyond a press release, it seems to have been vaporware. So with that, my exploration of the Sand Cube came to a sudden end, almost like what happened to its manufacturer. Micronet got its start in the 1980s, selling external SCSI SciQuest and hard drives. It was bought by Ampex in 1998 after that company pivoted away from magnetic tape and towards digital video and audio production, which was a market in which Micronet had a foothold. But Ampex didn't really know what to do with it, and in February 2001 announced that Micronet would go out of business. This shocked employees who felt it was still viable, and they launched an independent effort to find a buyer. Perhaps surprisingly, they were successful, with Phantom Drives acquiring Micronet in April of that year. Phantom Drives eventually dropped the Micronet brand, but take a close look at its site, and you'll find Micronet still lives on as its parent company. Sandcube was an interesting product, but the niche market it catered to meant it didn't sell very well. Firewire was faster than Ethernet at the time, but a limit of only four users, and the fact that the cables could only be four and a half meters or about 15 feet long, meant that everyone connecting to it had to be physically nearby. Yes, you could get repeaters that would convert Firewire to fiber optic cables as a way to extend that distance, but if you were willing to go that far, you'd likely just step up to a proper SAN solution using Fiber Channel, the cards and software for which Addo was happy to sell you. Sandcube was a creative solution, but the problem it tried to solve just wasn't that big to begin with. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another video you should check out, and as always, thanks for watching.